Will Celsius customers ever get their money back? After the company filed for bankruptcy, the answer doesn't look good. I'm Joel Flynn. Welcome to The Daily Forecast, July the 14th, 2022. Celsius had just paid off hundreds of millions of dollars of loans, so why did they do that before filing for bankruptcy? Crypto prices, meanwhile, shrug off bigger US inflation and the prospect of bigger interest rate hikes. And could USDC be the next stable coin to topple? This is what's happening from Asia to the world. Join thousands of NFT traders who already start their day on Crypto Slam. So what exactly is Celsius up to? The crypto exchange has just filed for bankruptcy in the United States, but the move comes after it paid off hundreds of millions of US dollars worth of debts. Those repayments allowed it access to collateral in wrapped Bitcoin and just this week staked Ether. The $440 million worth of wrapped Bitcoin was moved to an account with FTX. Part of the roughly $435 million of staked ETH was also moved to another wallet. Just last month, Celsius bosses had vowed to fight for their customers. But what, if anything, can those customers expect now? Forecast Carolyn Wright has the details. The crypto lender finally bit the bullet, filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy with the same court handling Three Arrows case. Celsius said that provides the best opportunity to stabilise the business and protect stakeholders. Restructuring lawyers reportedly advised the firm to take the bankruptcy option back in June, but executives decided to fight on, saying that's what they believed clients wanted. The lender says it's spent the time since pausing transactions in mid-June exploring all the options and that they hope to emerge a stronger company. Celsius says it will continue to operate and that it has 167 million US dollars in cash on hand to support that. First priority for that cash? Paying its staff. It's not such good news for customers, however. Withdrawals are to remain on pause until further notice. The bankruptcy filing came despite the crypto lender paying off its last DeFi loan to Compound yesterday. According to data from Etherscan, $50 million worth of DAI was paid back, resulting in return collateral of almost 200 million US dollars worth of wrapped Bitcoin. Celsius has not said exactly what will happen with this collateral, but says it is obliged by the court to pay all post-petition obligations as they become due. I'm Carolyn Wright. Forecast. Crypto prices have risen for the first time in days despite surging US inflation. Data from last month show prices rising at their fastest level in 41 years. Analysts said the US Federal Reserve would now raise interest rates even more. Stocks fell on the news, but crypto was back in the green. Bitcoin had slumped 3.4% in the hour after that inflation data was released yesterday. It staged a comeback afterwards, though, back above the 20,000 US dollar mark as of Thursday morning in Asia. So, what's happening? Forecast Lachlan Kala takes a look. US inflation soared 9.1% in June compared to a year ago, according to the latest Consumer Price Index report released Wednesday. This shows the US Federal Reserve's aggressive interest rate hikes have done little to curb rising prices so far. The figure also represents a 1.3% increase from the previous month, the most since 2005, as the ongoing war in Ukraine and supply chain backlogs in China contribute to raising prices. The Fed was expected to raise the interest rate by a further 75 basis points this month, but one analyst believes they may consider an even more aggressive approach due to rampant inflation. Well, it was a shockingly high number. There's no two ways about it. I think there has been talk over the past two to three months that we'd see peak inflation, but instead we saw headline inflation and core inflation both accelerate. Now, what that does essentially is it pushes back expectations of a dovish Fed pivot until the very end months of 2022. It also raises the very real prospect that the Federal Reserve, when it meets in two weeks time today, will deliver a supersized 100 basis point rate hike. Sycamore warns that a 100 basis point rate hike is not the end of it. So previously, the market was sitting around 75 basis points. We thought we'd see that the market was priced for that. But what has happened now is the interest rate market in the US is priced almost for 100 basis points. It's sitting around 92 basis points to be exact, but it's also priced another 75 basis points in September and then another 40 basis points until the end of the year. What that means is that we've got about 240 basis points priced now between this point of time and the end of the year. But interestingly, 
reflecting the possibility that the Fed may go too hard, too fast, the interest rate market is now pricing in interest rate cuts from February 2023. And again, this reflects the possibility they might break something because they are just being too aggressive in their determination to tame inflation. While stocks fell in response, the crypto market has bounced back. Major cryptocurrencies were in the green this morning in Asia, rebounding from a sharp fall after the announcement. But will this trend continue? Sycamore says a substantial rally for cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin is still months away. What I think we need to see is, and, and whether you think that crypto leads equities, which some people do, or equities leads crypto, which has probably been more the trend over the past six to 12 months, you need to see risk sentiment improve. And I think given the fact that we're looking now for 100 basis points of interest rate hikes in two weeks time, followed by another 75 basis points, it's not just gonna be at this point of time. We're still looking probably three to four months down the track before equities start to rally, which means that for a more substantial rally in Bitcoin, it's still some months away. One of the biggest winners overnight was Matic. that came after Polygon was selected as one of the 2022 participants for Disney's Accelerator program. The media giant said the Accelerator crop will focus on building immersive experience through technologies such as augmented reality, artificial intelligence, and non-fungible tokens. Meanwhile, Bitcoin's hash rate dropped by 27% in 24 hours on Wednesday, the lowest since February this year. This after multiple crypto miners in Texas, a mining hub in the US, stopped operations with demand for power surging amid a searing heat wave. I'm Lachlan Keller, Forecast. Could USDC be the next stable coin to topple? Concerns over the state of Circle's USDC reserves are growing. Speculation was stoked over the weekend by an article alleging that Circle does not disclose what reserves are being held where. So can users be sure that their cash is safe? Forecast Monica Ghosh reports. Speaking in an exclusive interview with Forecast's editor-in-chief Angie Lau last week, Circle CFO Jeremy Fox Green said reserves backing the USD coin were ring-fenced. He explained that as the company is regulated under state money transmission laws, it does not have any right on USDC reserves that are held in segregated accounts with financial institutions. The institutions that hold the USDC reserve aren't lending it out in any way to grow USDC. They're just holding fiat currency within the banking system and holding US treasuries in custody on behalf of USDC holders. So there's no lending out of USDC to grow USDC. All USDC growth is driven by customer activity. However, an article on Saturday by American author and journalist Matt Taibbi questioned how the stablecoin issuer projected earnings of 438 million US dollars from interest from its USDC reserves. According to Circle's latest weekly reserves breakdown, 42.5 billion of its 55.5 billion USDC reserves were treasuries dated three months or less, with the rest in cash. Even if coupled with next to no return on the cash, Using the current yield on three-month treasuries, the lowered average return on circle stated reserves would be above those projected earnings. But some have also questioned how reliable those published reserve figures are, with former banker Francisco Pola asking why there have been no audited financial statements since 2020. However, on Wednesday, a spokesperson for Circle told Forecast that the company's S-4 filing made on July 11th contains audited statements for both 2020 and 2021. The spokesperson added that according to standard practice for any Securities and Exchange Commission filing, the attached quarterly interim statements are not subject to an audit. Another of Taibi's concern related to protection for investors in Wisconsin, Minnesota and Wyoming as Circle operates in those states without license and the protection afforded by state money transmission laws. According to Circle's website, they are licensed in Minnesota but not Montana, Wisconsin or Wyoming, with Circle's spokesperson explaining that they do not have licenses in states where one isn't required. However, the company is registered as a money services business with the U.S. Department of the Treasury, meaning they must abide by Know Your Business, anti-money laundering and financial crimes compliance requirements. 
They went on to say the circle is therefore not just relying on state law for bankruptcy protection but also the federal bankruptcy code for what assets are considered assets of the estate and what is not. I'm Monica Ghosh, Forecast. All right, that's it for today's daily forecast. We have got more details on Celsius Circle and everything else that's happening in the crypto sphere right now on our website. Head to forecast.news for more. There is a link to that in the description below. Like and subscribe to this video as well for more content like it and follow us on Twitter as well at forecast underscore news. I'm Joel Flynn. I'll see you next time.